This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And when I first got my hands on the Core i3 entry-level version of the MacBook Air, I was curious to see how the lowest performance model would stack up against the new higher-end option, especially the quad-core i7 version of the MacBook Air. Well, today, I have that quad-core i7 version of the MacBook Air, and I want to run some benchmarks to see just how powerful the 2020 MacBook Air can be, and if it is a worthy upgrade to the quad-core i5 version at $150 more, and I also want to compare it toe-to-toe -to -toe against the entry-level 13-inch MacBook Pro because my theory is that this i7 version of the MacBook Air might be the better deal. Now, before we get into this video, I wanna plug a side project that I'm doing. I am currently streaming Resident Evil 3 Remake on Twitch. I'm trying to get into game streaming a little bit. So if you have any interest in video games, if you have a Twitch account, I would be super grateful if you gave me a follow on Twitch. I'm trying to reach affiliate status, so I need 50 followers on Twitch. Again, if you have a Twitch account, I will leave a link to my Twitch channel in the description below, and I would really appreciate it if you would give me a follow. Thank you so much. All right, but enough shameless self-promotion, let's get back into the video, and let's run our first benchmark on the i7 version of the MacBook Air, and of course, that would be everyone's favorite benchmark, Geekbench. Running the CPU benchmark of Geekbench on the i7 version of the MacBook Air, we get a single core score of 1,098 and a multi-core score of 3,024. That's some nice gains against the i3 version. Now, while I don't have my own version of the i5 to test, I use Jason Snell's benchmark from Six Colors to look at the performance of the i5 model. And the i7 version had a nice increase in score. The i5 version of the MacBook Air got a single core score of 1047 and a multi-core score of 2658. Now obviously the most interesting comparison of these CPU benchmarks isn't even against these other versions of the MacBook Air. We should expect the i7 version to score higher than the i3 and higher than the i5. What I was really curious to see is how did it perform against the entry-level MacBook Pro? And here is where things got pretty interesting. So the MacBook Air actually scored higher in single-core performance against the MacBook Pro. The i7 Air scored 1,098 to the 879 score on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. However, the Pro kept its edge in multi-threaded performance with a score of 3,689 over the Air's lower 3,024. But honestly, this is a very encouraging result because it wasn't a complete win for the MacBook Pro. The Air beat it in single-core performance and was still able to get a respectable multi-core score. However, Geekbench isn't the most intensive benchmark in our arsenal, so let's move over to something that's really gonna peg the CPU, Cinebench R20. Running Cinebench, we can see that the i7 version of the Air is completing this task much faster than the entry-level i3 version, and by the end of the test, we got an overall score of 1,041, handily beating the i3 version of the MacBook Air. Again, I don't have access to the i5 version, so I looked up a video from Max Tech to see what his i5 version scored, and he got an 863 score on the Cinebench benchmark. And while these still are just benchmarks, Cinebench is one of the benchmarks where it really does max out the CPU, so it is a good indication that there is a performance increase for the i7 despite the similar clock speeds compared to the i5. Now running the same benchmark on the entry-level 13-inch MacBook Pro, we can see that the i7 version of the MacBook Air scores about 500 points lower. And that does make sense because I am running a multi-threaded CPU test in Cinebench and that lines up with our Geekbench results. Now I wanna run even more CPU tests, but before we do that, I wanna tell you about our sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. What is Surfshark? 
Surfshark is a forward-thinking privacy protection tool which guarantees instant online safety and offers a no-frills usage experience. Surfshark VPN encrypts all the data sent to the internet so that no one can see your passwords, private messages, steal photos, videos, or other sensitive data. To put it simply, Surfshark protects its users in the open waters of today's internet. It's also great for traveling to other countries so you can connect to Wi-Fi without worrying about sharing your data with strangers, and great for getting past geo-restricted content blockers and internet censorship so you can still access the websites you love even when traveling abroad. Surfshark is also multi-platform, so it works on all of your favorite devices, including iOS, Android, macOS, and Windows. Best of all, Surfshark is offering viewers of Greg's Gadgets an 83% discount and one month extra free. That's one of the best prices in the industry, and all you have to do is enter the promo code Greg's Gadgets when you sign up by clicking the link in the description below. It's that easy. So make sure you protect and secure your sensitive data with Surfshark, and thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Furthermore, I also reran this Cinebench test to see how sustained clock speeds perform with the i7 version of the Air, and to see if there was any thermal throttling. Using the Intel Power Gadget, we can see that the clock speed of the air was usually around 1.7 to 1.8 gigahertz above the base clock speed at 1.2 gigahertz, but well below the theoretical max performance of the 3.8 gigahertz during turbo boost. We can also see that the temperatures are maxing out on the air CPUs, hitting that max thermal load hovering around 99 degrees Celsius. So does the MacBook Air thermal throttle? Technically, no. Thermal throttling is when it drops below the base clock speeds, but with a better thermal design, say in a thicker laptop or one with better cooling, these would boost more towards those higher 3.8 gigahertz clock speeds rather than staying at 1.7 gigahertz. So is Apple lying to us by saying that the Air's max clock speed can reach up to 3.8 gigahertz? No, it's a little bit more complicated than that. You might see that 3.8 gigahertz boost only during short bursts and especially during single core workloads, not multi-threaded workloads. It's the main reason why the Geekbench single core performance was higher than the entry-level i5 version of the MacBook Pro. So again, sustained workloads, the air is going to do worse, but if you have workloads that have bursty performance, especially with single core, you're gonna see some nice performance gains going to the i7. Okay, let's move on to the graphics performance of the i7 version of the MacBook Air. And again, this one really shocked me. So I ran the Heaven benchmark on both the i3 and i7 version of the Air. And while the i3 performed atrociously with an overall score of 380 and a really lackluster average FPS of 15.1, that was well below the supposed 80% performance increase that Apple mentions on their website. Now, to my delightful surprise, the i7 version of this laptop scored much better. Running the same Heaven benchmark on the same medium settings, the i7 version scored an overall of 641 with an average FPS of 25.4. Now, while the Air's graphics aren't as good as the ones found on the MacBook Pro, they are a lot closer to that entry-level model. The Pro overall scored 830 with an average FPS of 33. Now listen, even though the i7 version of the Air did perform better for gaming, I still would not recommend picking up a MacBook Air just to play games on, but I was able to play games on low settings or casual games on Apple Arcade like Ocean Horn 2 at much better frame rates than the i3 version. So I think for very light gaming, this laptop should be able to do it. If you'd like to see a dedicated gaming video on this MacBook Air, please let me know in the comments below and also suggest some games that you would like to see benchmarked. All right, let's get to the moment you've all been waiting for. Is the i7 version of the MacBook Air worth it? Yes, it is. Not only did it handily outscore the i3 version, it also scored higher than the i5 MacBook Air at a good enough margin where it isn't a waste of money to upgrade the CPU. Now, with that being said, if you're looking for the best value to performance ratio in the MacBook Air, I would really recommend spending the extra $100 to upgrade to the i5 version, but if you want the most powerful MacBook Air that looks like it can get pretty close to performance to the entry-level MacBook Pro, 
it looks like this i7 MacBook Air is really worth it. In fact, let me run you through a scenario. So let's say we go to Apple's website and take a look at the entry-level MacBook Pro and this highest end configuration of the MacBook Air. The entry-level MacBook Pro starts at $1,300 for a quad-core i5 with 128 gigabytes of SSD storage. This i7 Air is $1,250 for a quad-core i7 with double the storage at 256 gigabytes for $50 less. Plus, it has other improvements like the better microphone, speakers, and a much more reliable Magic Keyboard. And at this point, I think that the i7 version of the MacBook Air is a much better deal than the entry-level MacBook Pro. Now, I do wanna run even more tests. These were just benchmarks. I do plan on doing some video editing on this i7 machine, as well as testing out other use cases. So if you wanna see that dedicated review of the i7 version of the MacBook Air, or if you wanna see a direct comparison video against the 13-inch MacBook Pro, Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Also, if this video helped you out, make sure you give me a like. Also, I would really love to hear your thoughts. Let me know how you think the quad-core version of the i7 MacBook Air performed in the comments below. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. Don't forget to check out our sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. And also don't forget to follow me on Twitch if you wanna check out any of my game streams. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.